Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Okay, so I wanted to show everybody who follows what I'm doing. This, this next step is gonna be kind of critical uh, for anybody who's trying to design a trading system that will enable you to dynamically load in a some form of a trading strategy. Uh, a lot of the bigger trading platforms do exactly this, uh, be it if they're .NET, like in Deltix, where you develop a trading script in uh, C Sharp, which is an actually self-contained DLL or dynamic link library in .NET, and then be able to integrate that right into like some sort of server engine that can be loaded up right into the system. And then the C Sharp trading script would have access to all the resources in the trading system. I've also seen this in the original market Setra using Ruby. Uh, as a scripting language. Uh, other um, examples could be uh, TradeLink with C Sharp as well. And so they're doing the exact same thing, but here they're, uh, I'm gonna show you C++. Obviously you wanna keep it really fast. Now, the way I'm experimenting, it looks like everything's gonna be targeted on Linux, um, probably eventually FreeBSD, where it has the f um, fewer uh, resources to, um, which could add in latency with other typical Linux environments. But if you go into a BSD environment, which is pure uh, Unix, um, you're doing away with this. So with these sort of examples I'm gonna show you, it's very powerful to dynamically load in some form of a trading uh, strategy, let's say. So in this case, we're doing it in a C++ uh, compiled object file. And um, essentially, I'll just show you what we're doing. So here I've posted the uh, history of where this comes from. I was also originally going to plan it to do it in Python, but you could do it in Python as well by embedding a Python script right into your C++ application. Right off the bat, as you can know, if, if you're smart enough, you'll know that Python's an interpreter, whereas if it's done through C++, it's obviously compiled. The performance metrics that I've seen, I've also posted some recent articles, I would show if you stick with C or C++, it can be up to uh, five or even ten times faster than uh, Python. So the question is, why would you use something like Python uh, to embed into? You can do it out of convenience for dynamic uh, research data that you want to download, you know, to, to whip up a, a quick um, trading script. But for a live trading environment, you, you should be sticking with uh, C or C++ right from within the um, application or trading system that you're developing. So let me give you some examples here. Um, one of the easier uh, examples using this uh, GitHub, there's some really good other ex explanations here uh, from Linux Journal, and this is really old school technology, but this project looks pretty cool. Um, it's more succinct that can show you the actual simpler way of doing it in just a couple of um, uh, lines versus reading pages upon pages like you get at Linux Journal. But I'm gonna whip over to my uh, shell here or my terminal okay so i've downloaded this project here from uh from github i'm sure you know how to do that i always use the download zip um uh i mean that's probably the easier way i do it <laughs> okay so what you're downloading here is you're going to be downloading a variety of examples here so we have obviously our make file um that's pretty simple it does work we have our DL class, which is the source file that will do all this magic hocus pocus stuff to be able to make this um, action happen. So um, we, we will be running this uh, bin file in a bit. I can just run it for you. Uh, oh, so, so there you go. So what it's doing, it's dynamically loading in this um, C++ object, and uh, it's also dynamically loading in the square one as well. Okay, I'll show you the code there. And that's all happening in the make file. So what's happening is here, you can see we have a separate object file being created called square.so. We also get a separate one called triangle, and then we're also making the DL test, okay? Now, don't forget, we also have the DL class as well. 
So essentially what we've got here is we've got square, triangle, it's two separate um, C++ object files, and they're just created as um, essentially just shared libraries. So that's what these two are doing right here, as you can tell in the G++, we're, we're just creating two shared libraries, um, square and triangle, and then what we're doing is we're going to combine our main, the DL uh, test among the um, dynamic libraries as well. So that's all happening in the flags that you, you send over on when you build out or compile and link your, your uh, C++ object files. So let's take a look at the um, first file, which I think is this one, which would probably be easier, um, the main. So let's check out that. Um, all right, so here in the main, you can see we have here uh, an auto po pointer uh, that gets created. Uh, this is all kind of explained here in the files and the, in the readme files. So I'm just gonna try to roughly explain it to you at a high level. So what we're doing here is we've got, we're dynamically loading our two object files so essentially what these are, are what, what I was talking about. These can be two separate um, libraries or object files or C++ source files. I'll show you those in a second. And what we do is we're just uh, loading them as, as shared pointers. Um, and then from there, if you're not familiar with old traditional C++, you have to manage the memory in C++, but here, because the shared pointer is a little more cleaner to do it, but you still got to destroy the objects that, that you create with the uh, shared pointers. And that's what we're doing here. So these are dynamically loading in um, these these object files, okay? I, I've shown these in C++ as well. Um, or sorry, in C Sharp, loading in other C Sharp objects or C++, kind of like a P invoke, uh, which is similar in .NET. And then doing a dynamic load into um, as, a, as a separate class, but doing them uh, as shared pointers, delete them. So now that they are now uh, shared pointers right here, and referred to as triangle and square. And then of course we need to test um, if everything's okay. If they're null, then we just uh, just put out a message saying we can't instantiate those objects, triangle or square. Um, so we're doing that both in the uh, triangle, the square, and um, that's what we're doing here. Uh, so um, this one is using the polygon as well. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, so we're lo dynamically loading the triangle and somewhere in the square here as well. But uh, so we do those two tests. So here's where the fun begins right here. Because we've now dynamically uh, instantiated it, uh, we have now access to the functions within those objects. So let me show you both the um, square and the triangle. Okay, here's a triangle. And here, actually, let me just show you that. So it's pretty simple stuff. So we've, we've, we've got a little header file associated with the um, triangle, we call the uh, math library or header that we need. So here we have our constructor for the, uh, which is part of the polygon, um, which is a child of polygon um, through that uh, polymorphism, blah, 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 object oriented fun stuff. I haven't looked at in a while. But um, so we've got our little um, uh, class objects that we've got. We've got our constructor. We've got now a virtual uh, function that gets set. And here's, here's the area of function that we looked at, okay? So you can see now, because we have an area function, we can call it from it within the class when we instantiate it in the parent um, class, which is here. So here, which one are we looking at? We're looking at triangle. So here in triangle, this is what we're talking about. We're, we're basically um, creating our shared pointer, dynamically loading the class called triangle, uh, object file, as I've 
um, into here. So we're dynamically loading this one in, right in the code itself. Okay, this is very powerful. And then we can now instantiate it, as you can see here, for both triangle and square. As I said, we delete it. Um, we test to see if it does exist or not. Um, and now we're going to call it. So right here in the triangle, uh, we're now calling our area, our area um, function. So that is pretty powerful. So as you can imagine, we can have our, our uh, function uh, get called uh, from the child um, object file. And then those resources can then be passed into the parent in this one being the main. And we're also doing the same thing with square as well. So that's essentially how we do this dynamic uh, link, uh, it's called dynamic class loader in C++ in uh, Mac and Linux. Uh, and it's, it's a very powerful way to do it. So essentially what we could do for anybody who's new at this, we can have our triangle, we can also have our polygon um, objects or, or classes as, as its own separate, um, our own separate, call it indicator, our own separate trading strategy, and then dynamically load it within the, the, the parent main application, which is basically our trading system or it could be a maybe a, a, a strategy uh, a strategy engine um, so it can dynamically load in those training strategies. Very powerful. Now again, um, let me just go back to my uh, main main uh, here because we're keeping we have our dynamic uh, parent class or dynamic parent application written in C++. Um, and I've just showed you how to dynamically class load into uh, using C++. I see no reason why we can't use C. And reason would, if you want to use C, it's even simpler because you're, using, you're, you're removing a lot of this um, extraneous extra code as well uh, here. Um, this is a very simple example, but if you got a very long C++ um, class, it can get, you know, I mean, I know it kind of split hairs, but if you're getting into the world of high frequency trading, you can imagine that, that uh, becomes a big deal because uh, everything comes, is measured in microseconds. So if you can do it in C, it's even better. Um, but here I'm demoing it with this GitHub uh, uh, example uh, and how to dynamically load in C++. But um, if you probably know how to develop and write your own C scripts, create the object files, enable them to be accessible um, from C++, I'm pretty sure that can be done, but again, I could be wrong, just de depending upon how you define uh, the C functions so that they can be shared uh, from the parent uh, uh, application and how you define it in the, uh, the object class as well when you try to uh, dynamically load it. But this is just an example, but even if you can't do it in C, it's no big deal breaker, um, but you can see, you can definitely do it C++ dynamically loading in another C++ uh, class object. And that's very, very powerful. Um, so now, um, and as I said as well, which I, I'm, 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 my brain is spurning a hundred different topics right now, but one of the big things you need to take away is the performance of dynamically loading in a C++ object versus something like a Python. As I said, if you try to load in Python, what you got to worry about is to dynamically load in the session of the Python interpreter itself on top of uh, uh, running the Python code in itself within the C++. And then there's a whole other mixed bag of stuff that you got to worry about. So, you know, it's a good option, as I said earlier, where you want to do it as a convenience thing, no problem. It can be done. You can also do the same thing with R using R inside. Um, and if, if speed is not critical, but you want to do it out of convenience to be able to dynamically load in your R Python script, you can definitely do it. Um, but you, for performance in a live trading environment, you definitely want to keep it in C++. So I just want to show that to you. Uh, it's very powerful again, and hopefully you got something from it. Oh, and also, um, 
before I forget, if you watch this video on fast flow, this example that I'm just showing you here. Oh, where's my sublime? Here it is. Now, here, you could dynamically load in these object files as separate workers, okay? So you can have your fast flow process um, and you, you set it up in a way, depending upon what design pattern you want, you could set up each and every worker and each worker would be its own separate C++ class. So knowing that um, it's, it's, it's pure, pure 100% C++ for end to end. And um, this is again, very powerful, especially when you go into a virtualized, paralyzed environment, which would be very quick if you've studied and looked at the, the uh, fast flow. If you watch this video and go through my fast flow uh, video playlist on my YouTube channel, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so hopefully I'll help you out and uh, offer you some better guidance on where I'm going with this thing. Talk to you later.